I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what my opinion of the Witchwood nerfs is, and thought this episode would be about them. Sorry to disappoint, it's just that I was pretty much right two weeks ago. Naga Sea Witch and the Caverns Below are both dead, Spiteful Dex took a bit too large of a hit to survive, Warlock was weakened but not killed off, Paladin is still the top class thanks in no small part to Baku the Moon Eater, but every other class has become a little more even grounded. The only surprises are that Priest seems to have dipped a bit in the rankings while Hunter made a resurgence, and while that's interesting, I can't exactly make an entire video about it. Well, maybe I could, but I imagine it would be rather boring, so I'm not going to. The entire video would probably just be me gloating that I predicted Quest Rogue's demise better than Omni Slash did. Greetings and welcome to Hearthstone Theory, featuring a guy who made it to Legend for the first time in months. Woohoo! Many players in the comment section and in Twitch chat have come to me asking about the three basic deck archetypes, aggro, midrange, and control. One day, I will probably make a video more properly detailing the differences between these three styles of play, but today I will be focusing on a single aspect of that difference. All of these decks have a different curve, a different flow from low cost cards to high cost cards. Today we are going to focus on the top part of that curve, and what the strengths and weaknesses of those cards generally are. I have a specific term I use for these cards, capstones. While many players prefer the term win conditions, I use the term capstone to more broadly categorize the top cards in decks. If you've ever watched a show like Yu-Gi-Oh, you can compare these capstone cards to cards like the Blue Eyes White Dragon, or Slifer the Executive Producer. These are the cards that signify great power, but are practically required to come out of the deck's late game. The capstones are oftentimes the most exciting parts of the deck, hence why everyone went insane for Shutterwalk, but uttered a collective meh towards Life Drinker. While perhaps overrated, these cards often become the centerpieces and defining factors in the decks they are in, so it's worth examining them more thoroughly to see what makes them work. So today we'll look broadly at the idea of these high power cards, and what makes them interesting in comparison to other cards. As always, leave a comment if you have an observation, question, or different idea. Without further ado, let's begin. Before we can elaborate on what the strongest card in your deck does, we need to understand why the mana curves exist the way it does. Each turn you are given one card and some mana, and your strategy for using these resources determines your deck's type. Aggressive decks attempt to use as many of these cards as quickly as they can, to overwhelm the opponent before they have a counter. Midrange decks attempt to spend all their mana as efficiently as possible, which means keeping some cards in hand to maintain flexibility. Control decks focus on maximizing the value of each of their cards, which usually means having high cost cards but keeping a few early gameplays as well. These are the three families of decks. While there are some other subtle differences, and some players debate the exact placement of certain decks into these families, most decks can be categorized in this way. However, it becomes very clear when you look more closely into the decks in each family that something is missing, that the whole story isn't being told. For example, Odd Paladin and Odd Rogue can both be considered aggressive decks, but the two decks have little in common. What are their differences? Why are they better in some cases and worse in others? This is a complicated and multi-layered question, so today I'll be focusing on one aspect of it. The deck's highest value cards, or as I like to call them, capstones. The game of Hearthstone has been meticulously crafted, such that powerful cards and combinations are harder to play. With that, I give you this definition of a capstone. A card in a deck that is much harder than the rest of the cards to play, but provides a lot of power when it is played. These cards are a core concept in card games like Hearthstone, oftentimes becoming win conditions for certain decks. In fact, every single class legendary in the classic set could be considered a capstone card, though some are more powerful than others. These cards are fascinating in how they come to define the decks that they place themselves in. Savannah High Main, for example, became infamous in Hearthstone not because it's the strongest card to have ever existed, but because it was the strongest card that an aggressive hunter could feasibly use. Similar tales exist with Spiteful Summoner, since the power that could be brought out with the card was extreme enough to usually serve as a win condition. Though the hard part about playing Spiteful Summoner comes with the deck construction, but that's a story for another time. The important thing to remember about these cards is that, generally speaking, they are harder to play. In the simplest form, that means that they cost a lot of mana, and therefore can't be played until the late game, often eating a whole turn when it is played. But exceptions to this rule exist. For example, Edwin Van Cleef can be considered a capstone card, but he is low-costed. This is because the difficulty of playing him comes from the necessity to activate his combo, rather than from his mana cost like other cards. We'll flesh out the unique aspects of capstones in a minute, 
But first, let's go back to our three deck types, aggressive, mid-range, and control. When examining the individual decks in these categories and asking, what are these decks' capstones, you begin to obtain insight both in why the deck is in its category, and also how it differentiates itself from others in that category. For example, Odd Rogue has two capstone cards, Filespine Slayer and Leroy Jenkins. Compare and contrast with Odd Paladin's capstone cards, Level Up and Vine Cleaver. These cards make sense in regards to the decks that they are a part of. Odd Rogue hits opponents hard in the face and maintains this by eliminating strong minions that get in its way, while Odd Paladin floods the board and destroys its opponent after it collects a lot of minions. An Odd Paladin doesn't run Leroy, despite Leroy being a good aggressive capstone, since Leroy doesn't fit in with the strategy being used. However, there are threads of consistency here, namely the cost of these particular cards. Aggressive decks look for a capstone that's either easy to play, provides a lot of damage to the opponent's face, or in the best case, both. Additionally, in comparison to mid-range or control, the number of capstones in aggressive decks is often smaller. A face hunter deck might run a single Leroy Jenkins, but it doesn't even need this card. This makes sense. Aggressive decks want cards that they can play easily and quickly, and the concept of capstones runs counter to that. So the few capstones that they do use had better not be hard to play, and had better be very helpful to the deck's strategy. Midrange decks are able to apply a greater number of capstones in their decks compared to aggro, and can focus on powerful cards that aren't as offensively focused. Because their primary concern is playing these minions quickly and efficiently, they are usually the least picky of the class options, able to adjust their deck to make room for whatever strong card they like, so long as it's powerful enough. My Even Paladin, for example, runs Deathwing and Lay on Hands, two very unconventional choices. However, those cards also have won me several games. This doesn't attest to the strength of those cards, it more attests to the way that a mid-range deck can replace its highest power cards while remaining relevant. Even Shaman runs Alakir the Windlord not because Alakir is incredibly powerful, but because it's powerful enough. And an even mid-range deck where only half of the collection is available, both doesn't have as many other options, and also doesn't care. Control decks are the final example, and usually have the most cards they consider capstones. Control and combo decks are uniquely defined by their capstones, since their goal is to maximize the power of each of their cards. Combine that with the cards that are already powerful, and control decks can become ridiculous. What's worse than having to deal with the Lich King, a Sleepy Dragon, and a couple of Primordial Drakes? having to deal with Hadronox immediately afterwards. Capstones also allow us to understand combo and one-turn kill decks. These decks focus on a single capstone card and aim to maximize its power using other cards, be it Antonidas gain support from Sorcerer's Apprentices and Time Warp, or the old Naga Sea Witch reducing the cost of giants to become ridiculously low. This focus on a single capstone allows great power to come from it, usually to devastating and rage-inducing effect. All these examples of capstones might seem jarring and confusing. Our example of Leroy not fitting in with Odd Paladin might seem baffling to the casual viewer who thinks that all aggro is the same. Additionally, certain mid-range decks like Tempo Mage, though Tempo Mage is a more aggressive mid-range than most, run cards like Pyroblast which at first glance seem pathetically weak compared to spells like Fireball. Why is a card that plain their capstone? There is a simple solution to understanding why a deck's capstones are the way they are, and that's by asking yourself one question. What is this deck's win condition? This question only has a few answers. You need to deal 30 damage to your opponent each game, sometimes more, so how do you plan on dealing that damage? Do you keep hitting face as often as you can? Do you control the board and use the minions to deal the damage? Do you get a large amount of value out of one card, or a set of cards? Or do you last forever and let the opponent's fatigue finish them off? Once you know this answer, the reason the capstones are in the deck becomes much more obvious. Even Shaman wants to control their board, so they include Lich King and Hagatha. Odd Rogue wants to hit the opponent's face, so they use Leroy for the damage and Valspine to counter large value. Back when Freeze Mage still existed, they started the game by controlling the board, but their win condition was simply dealing a lot of damage with spells and Alexstrasza. Is that much different from a face hunter? Tempo Mage starts the game with a lot of minions, but once those all die, they're left with a half-dead opponent and no cards. No wonder Alunith and Pyroblast are the deck's aces in the hole. The sudden burst damage is identical to playing Leroy. This is the important part about capstones. Being the hardest card in a deck to play, they are only played under one circumstance, when everything is going perfectly according to plan. No one plays a Leroy on turn 5 unless the game is about to end on turn 5, and no one plays the Lich King unless it's time for the Lich King. 
So if you want to know your opponent's deck, or even your own deck you grabbed off the internet, you need to ask yourself one thing. What is the win condition? Compare that to the capstones, these expressions of finality, and the deck's strategy for victory should be made fairly clear. Of course, this type of insight isn't always necessary. Simple practice with decks will let you understand instinctively how they operate. But another thing that correlates to this idea is reviewing newly released cards or cards that are outside of the current meta. Cards like Emerus, Lady in White, and Lanessa Sun Sorrow are cards that count as unique capstones, but haven't seen much play yet. As new cards are released, new decks will be discovered, and old cards like this may see relevance. If you want to know if they will see relevance, just look at the card and ask, what is the win condition? The only remaining challenge once you know that answer is building the deck.